Hello. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I think that I have a big goal this afternoon, or in the last 40 minutes, which is to keep you awakened after a two intense days and going to the end of the, the, the day here. Just one session left where everyone wants to go or back home or for a pint and so on, for some parties. So this is my main goal. The next one is I'd like to share with you uh, an experience that I had in my previous job where we could adopt better sprint goals. So that's what I'm saying, that we moved our focus rather than focusing on plan, on, on goals. And I would like to share all the challenges that we had, the, the problems that we faced, the environment that we had, and uh, perhaps you guys can uh, also take some uh, learning from that. Uh, I'd like to start with the first goal. I'd like to, you, pick one our colleague, can be by the side of you, and just make a change in that person. Make something that that person to change, I don't know, uh, rather than, or perhaps moving the badge to another place, moving the watch to another hand. You have to change some, so someone else in 30 seconds. Make a change in someone else. 30 seconds. Ten seconds left. Done? Was it easy to make someone to change something? No? Easy. Was easy, wasn't it? Okay, now I would like to go to the second activity. So everyone should have a piece of paper, one of the pieces of papers. And I'd like to you, whenever you get a piece of paper, whenever everyone has one piece of paper, I'd like to run the instructions that you have here in this piece of paper. Is that correct? We're going to have two minutes max to do that. Is that okay? Okay, folks. If you haven't finished yet, we're going to have time for that. We can just hold. We're going to have a brief about that right now. But uh, we're going to have time for that. Just hold a bit, folks. We can stop now. We're going to do a brief about that, and we're going to have time to finish our work. Uh, so basically, what happened now? We had three groups in here, correct? So we had a group one, which is they had to find someone with a blank piece of paper and tell them step by step in a very detailed plan how to build a paper airplane, correct? And then we had the group three, which is no, no, uh, not nothing written on the, the piece of paper, right? And someone just approached you and started telling you how to build a paper airplane, correct? Did you do that? Did you start executing the, the steps that that part was asking you? Didn't you know how to build a paper airplane? Did you finish, by the way? Those ones that had like the group one and group three, did you finish the, the paper airplane? One? Wow, good. What happened with the, the number group two? They had a single statement saying, build a paper airplane that can fly at least four meters. We don't know if whether it can fly four meters or not. We're going to test it later on. But they just had, they knew what to do. Just build a paper airplane. And they had skills to do that. And my question is, the group one and the group three, didn't you know how to build that? Or, or even perhaps even better, the way that it's described here. Didn't you know that? Didn't you know how to do that? How can we link back to our daily work? Uh, by the way, how many of you here are familiar with Scrum? How many of you are working with Scrum? Scrum, everyone? And then are you familiar with Scrum, folks? Uh, yes? OK, because I'm going to talk about sprint goals and sp uh, sprint backlog. How we can link to our daily work. How many times we go to sprint planning, come up with sprint backlog, and just start doing that without knowing what we want to achieve? And um, here, nobody has asked me a question, why are we doing that? What is the purpose? I know that I, I made a 
of course, a trap for the learning purpose. But we start, we, we are possibly, we have many Scrum Masters, Agile codes, Agile codes, and we just start doing that without knowing the purpose. And that's what I'd like to explore more today. Do you know why we do that? Or where we this mindset come from mainly? This come from mainly from this time, whenever we were, we were building cars. And uh, what happened mainly in America, there was a, a big expansion building cars, a big revolution. And there were some plants over there with more than six, 7,000 employees from different countries. And the communication was very hard and learning how to build a car was taking a long time. So Frederick, Frederick Taylor came uh, to, that, to this place and uh, basically he, he invented what they called scientific management, which is, I get a bunch of engineers, they assess the problem, they break the problem down in smaller pieces, very specific, and then I give people that, that specifically out, uh, I, I make the best, uh, how can I say, I can make the best way to do that piece, to build that piece, and then I'll tell you, you move from here to there, you move from here to there. And whenever someone was leaving, another one that would come in and start working there, it was quite easy to pick it up without much communication, right? And we've brought this mindset nowadays, but what's happening with our environments? We got those engineers and we made them laborers. And we expect that they're gonna do something like a robot or in a linear, or linear way. We'll tell them how to do and just go and do it. That's why we are having this and focusing a lot on in sprint backlog. You have your commitment that sprint planning. I'm gonna explore this a bit more. And uh, you, 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 you don't know what you are doing, what you, are doing, what you want to achieve. That was explored a lot here in this conference to know the purpose. What is the alignment we have in the purpose? What we want to achieve? Uh, before I start sharing my my experience, I would like to do, do some analogy. Let's imagine here that we are all together and we're going to go for a hiking, okay? We just decide, let's go for a hiking. We are in front of a mountain and we say, oh, okay, we can see the top of the mountain. And our goal today is to be on the top of the mountain by the end of today. So we have some time and uh, we, have, we know what to do. And then we just decide, okay, let's trace a plan here. I can see that the path going this way. There are some trees over there that I can't see it. Uh, but I can see the rest of the path behind those trees. And yeah, we can forecast that in six, seven hours, we can be on the top of the mountain. Then we start walking up. And whenever we cross those trees, we either see now a big lake or a shorter path to go to the top of the mountain. What would we do? Would we change our plan and keep what we have, what we want to achieve, or let's just follow our plan because we had committed to. What would we do? What would you do? No, let's keep the plan and I'm gonna die here. I have to cross, I don't know how to swim and I have to cross this lake, I'm gonna, we're gonna adapt. And why don't we do this within our sprints? Because we committed to a plan and we just follow that plan. So there's no much collaboration, mainly from the developers, developers, because they don't know what they are doing. They're just following a plan, right? So basically, to clarify here, what I want to say is, a sprint goal in Scrum is what we want to achieve. In the next two weeks, or usually two weeks, between one and four weeks usually, what we are trying to achieve here. What is the purpose of spending two weeks working something uh, during this time? And the sprint backlog is basically our plan. And I hear, I pay attention to main or key words. It's how, the plan, we intend, and we, a lot, we use a lot of commitment or commit to. We intend to do, it's a forecast. So we want to be on top of the mountain, our goal. We have a timeline for that, a time box that we believe that can achieve that. However, we're gonna adapt our plan based on the context. Every step further, we reassess our context and decide the next step. This is what happened on a daily basis in a Scrum team, or it should. If we, I'm the, talking about 
a team level, but it was discussed a lot here in terms of Roman explored a bit today at product level. So if we have a product vision, we would be aligning with the why, why we are doing that. So OKRs, hypotheses, they are all trying to bring alignment. And we're gonna explore this a bit more later on. Now to keep it real, let's go deeper into the context or the experience that I had. So we were working in um, distributed teams. The teams were co-located, but there were a couple of teams uh, in Dublin, Ireland, where I'm based to, Berzin, and there were some teams in America. The PO was in America, the, some SMEs, all of them, all the business side was pretty much in America. It was an America company. So as you can imagine, we have some barriers in terms of ways of working, uh, cultures, and so on. Uh, the product, I'm gonna call him product owner, because he was the really one that making decisions in terms of the product side. His uh, role was project, product, product manager. He was very focused on the plan. So basically, when we were on the sprint planning, he was saying, okay, so we are committing to this, uh, and during the sprint review, he was like, why didn't you commit to that? Why didn't you deliver that? And there was a lot of, a lot of friction, because there was some pressure to deliver what we were committing to. Hopefully, y you are luckier than me. You've never seen that. You've seen <laughs> so I would say that there was some kind of micromanagement. So not throughout the sprint, I have to be honest, but mainly during the sprint planning and the sprint reveal, there was some pressure in there. Uh, of course, uh, our office in, in Dublin, it was a brand new office, so the culture there was different than the one that we had in America. So there were some clashes in the way that we were working as well. So there was a sense of a feeling of we against them. The team was very reactive. Feedback during sprint review, it was taken like as a very bad thing. So there, were, there was some reaction. The team was the very defensive in that sense. As you can imagine, nobody really likes to work in this kind of environment and uh, not many, but we had uh, two or three uh, people living for that reason. So there's something that we should care about. And I was crew master of that team, and I said, okay, I, that we definitely have a problem, and I have to act, I have to do something. And then I was studying for my certifications and so on. I said, yeah, we don't have sprint goal. Our sprint goal is to deliver those bunch of stories. And then I said, okay, that's a good idea. Let's move to goals. And guess what? It was a big fail. Do you know why it was a big fail? How many of you here that changed someone else and uh, that people that said something, something changed just reverted back? So if you had switch badges, did you revert it back or did you revert the change back? Or do you still keep the change? Is there anyone that kept the change? Three, four, five, about six people. And what about the rest? We were talking about 15 minutes ago, and we just rolled back the change that happened. Why? Because we are trying to change people. People have habits, they have you know, uh, some beliefs, and we are try trying to change them. And that's what I tried to do. I just said, okay, Guys, I have a brilliant idea. I didn't say that, but I said, that's gonna work for sure. Uh, let's move to sprint goals. We don't have purpose. Let's work with purpose and so on. And I could see their faces on video conferencing that we were using. Oh, uh, yeah, just another scrum stuff. No adoption, no friction. They didn't see why. Uh, um, Angel was explaining, just covering this in the session before this one here. If they don't understand the why, the purpose, Will you adopt or start doing something if you don't see mean, meaning for that? You're gonna just, ah, this is just another stuff, right? And so uh, I start like thinking, how could I do? What can I do differently? And I remember, this is from the university, that about the, uh, in English is uh, general, oh, I forgot the word, so it's for the, G General system, general th system thinking, which is uh, it was explored by Lisa as well. Whenever you change something, a team, the rest of the team will 
adapt to it. Or in other words, if we have an environment and we make a change in the environment, the people within that environment, the agents on in that environment, they're gonna adapt to it. And just I just read about the Roman Spickler template. I just found out this on the internet. And he also gave a session today about uh, product vision and so on. And this I said, I'm gonna go over what is this template and then later on how that helped us out. So basically, Roman said, okay, this is a tool to help us out to uh, craft sprint goals. So first of all, we need to do, we need to know why we are spending those two weeks, why, what we want to achieve. Sorry, I'm using two weeks because I was using a uh, two week iteration. What we want to achieve in th within the next iteration, within the next time mocks. Is that enough? No. We also need to define the method we can, we're gonna use. So if I'm creating a, a, a prototype or if I'm uh, doing a spike and validate something or even build an increment, um, I'm gonna define the method of how we will assess what we've done. But I also have to have metrics to compare to. Otherwise, they are vague. We don't know to, okay, let's improve something. Im improve how much, on what. So we have to have, we have to be specific we have to have a metric to compare to. So during the sprint review, review is gonna be way easier to compare, say, okay, whether we achieved or not. We go from abstract to something more measurable, specific and measurable. I'm gonna explore this as well. Uh, yeah, so how do we know that the goal has been met? For those who don't know Roman Pichler, I've just learned today how to pronounce his name, Pichler. Uh, I would definitely advise to go to his blog uh, he has this template there, you can download it. You have also templates to create product vision and so on, a lot of good material in terms of product development. So, what I start doing then? Rather than try to force people to use that, I just let them to do the way that we were doing the sprint planning. However, at the end of the sprint planning, I start bringing that template and just asking folks, based on the stories that we have here in our backlog at this moment. What is our, what, what, what we want to achieve in the next wee two weeks? What we, gonna, we want to bring during the sprint review? And that start, start a conversation. It, it, did, it didn't happen straightforward, of course. It took some time, and I'm gonna cover the challenges that we had. But we start having a conversation, okay, oh, in the next weeks, we're gonna try to get ready for the release, or we, going, we want to validate our, if our inf infrastructure uh, is able to cope with the uh, amount of requests that we're gonna get in the next Black Friday. Something like that. So we start having this conversation, but rather than, it was afterwards. So we had our sprint backlog, we had our plan, and then I start saying, okay, how can we fill, the, fill it out, that template? And we, str we struggled, we struggled a lot, and I'm gonna explore this a bit more. However, the product owner starts seeing value on that. He starts to like, okay, that's what I, I, I'm focusing on here, I'm getting here on the sprint planning, so I know what. And he starts like shifting to defining what we want to do in this sprint, and then he knew that he could, could uh, come to the sprint review and say, okay, what we were intending to, to, to achieve, and then inspecting based on that. So he starts letting the team, five, sure, okay, it's not about 40, so just, sorry, I just got the five minutes, uh, okay, <laughs> I was expecting another 15, anyway, uh, so he starts focusing more on custom value, what is he going to get in this sprint, and that's after some time, the collaboration, as he led the team to uh, help, or he led the team to work more on the how, he started having much more collaboration throughout the sprint between the product owner and the dev team. Because the dev team had an idea how to build something, and then they would go to the product owner whenever they had a doubt, or they had whenever they had an idea, they say, okay, look at this. This can be better in this way, or this we won't be able to do it. There was some relation and some conversation. So the collaboration, collaboration started to emerge. At some point, the product owner start shifted his focus and started saying, bringing a proposal of ideas. Say, oh, okay, 
what about guys in the next two weeks if we do this and they start having conversations shifting to this way starting by this way so the first one i would advise if you want to adopt is to not force them to use but start asking them how to fill that out and the shift happened uh, some examples i'm gonna go through uh, quickly here so i to know about smart goals it's very i would say that it's very hard to get them all the five or five or six items very sp correct i always focused more on what we can measure and something that has to be spe specific so it has to be specific and we can measure that so some examples we would get something ready for the release or also a hypothesis we had a hypothesis we discussed in many um, talks on yesterday and today is we don't know we have an idea about value but we don't know until the customer is using it I think it was Nelson uh, Nestor yesterday. He he mentioned the, the the story that the guys spent five billion five billion years to then discover that nobody wants to nobody wanted to use that, right? So we can um, definitely test an assumption within a sprint, or let's suppose well we're gonna have back Black Friday. So let's test if our inf infrastructure supports the amount of uh, requests we're gonna get. That starts giving guidance on what and purpose and that opens a lot of space to define how so specific and measurable other two examples to improve some welcome page and complete all the stories in that we had in our sprint backlog does it look okay for you are all of them measurable and specific let me get some water while we think How can I know how much I improved uh, the welcome page? I can't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at those two. How do I know that I improved something? I have to be more specific. I want to improve the performance whenever I'm loading the welcome page by X percent. So something that we can definitely measure. That's too vague what about this one have you ever seen this as sprint goal <laughs> hopefully you are luckier than i i am but i've seen many times this whenever we set a sprint goal to finish the sprint backlog that says that we are going to the top of the mountain but i'm going to focus on the plan just follow the plan and do it there's no purpose on this this is basically the plan the sprint backlog Thanks. <laughs> uh, so just a few more examples how we can re reward that. Rather than to improve some performance, tell specifically what we want to improve by how much percent. Something that you can, again, measure. People know what they're going to aim like at that point. Perhaps you get even better results. If you want to validate some hypothesis, be more specific in terms of the hypothesis that you want to validate. If you want to enhance something, be more specific in terms of what service you want to, to, to improve so that you can measure and really see if you are adding customer value. You are bringing purpose, but you also can, whenever you, how many of you, or how many of us, because I'm include that, when we release a feature, we measure the impact of that. We just, oh, okay, we think that there's going to be a lot of value, we release that and that's it. Right? So this helps you to later on whenever release is this in production to really see if we, we we are adding that customer value exploring a bit of the challenges that we have uh, one sprint go only that was very hard mainly at the beginning we had we could see two uh, two sometimes even three goals which not ideal because it doesn't give folks to us and uh, that was unveiling another problem we, are where we had so many work in progress. We didn't have focus. So that helped us out to say, okay, we need to focus on some things at a time. So be careful about that. And the, currently, the current teams that I'm working on right now, this is a problem. We, we are not able to, to come up with sprint goals because we have too many work in progress related to many blockers that we have that is related to many dependencies that the teams have. So it starts 
to bring some of these functions that you may have. You may have to fix this before you, you ended up having proper goals. Vague goals, we also had like improve, improve welcome page. We had vague goals at the beginning with many work in progress. Uh, it's a, it's a something that you have to try and learn with that. Uh, if someone tells you how to do, you may understand, but whenever we try to apply this, you're gonna see uh, some problems and you're gonna learn with that. Uh, this morph with the team. Uh, the team had the sprint goal, but they, they were not using that. I printed out, put on our by our come our board, but that doesn't that didn't work to be honest. So they were not focused on the goal at the beginning. So what I've started doing is they were having this the the daily scrum, and at the end of the daily scrum, I was asking so. We have our plan here. I love physical boards for visual management. One with this plan here, okay? Everything that we just discussed. Are we going towards our goal? Are we going towards what we want to achieve within this sprint? And just be careful with the words, the, uh, the questions that we use during the daily scrum, because what I did yesterday, what I'm going to do today, is there any impediment? That's quite lead lead leading to a uh, stats report. We are missing. The second part of every single question, which is what I did yesterday that will help me out to achieve the sprint goal or the team, what I'm going to do today that's going to help us to move towards the sprint goal, and is there any, any impediment that's preventing us to move towards our goal? So start adding the second part of the questions, and then you may realize something that you need to fix, because if you don't have a sprint goal, you don't know where you're going to. And I would say it takes time. It took us, I would say, perhaps a couple of months until we joined that mindset. It takes some. It's like going to the gym. Someone can tell you how to do an exercise, but whenever you start doing it, you may feel a bit weird. And it takes some time until you get like the right movements. It takes time. Just go and do it. Some benefits going uh, straight then. So the daily scrum starts to be way more focused, way more productive. The team was running the daily scrum without me. I was there at the beginning, and at some point, they really start doing their, their uh, daily scrum, which sh should be. Um, the sprint reviews start having been way more uh, effective. Rather than just a demo, we were having like a really collaboration and feedback to each other. So the opinion of, or the feedback from the product owner was way more recep receptive to the team it's because they were collaborating throughout the sprint. So we ha start having more folks because we didn't find that we had too many work in progress. Collaboration improved throughout the sprint for sure. Motivation, the low morale that had with at the beginning also changed, switched to mo more motivated guys because they were part of the future. Future, They were deciding what to do and how to build things. They their ideas were listened to as well. So they were taken into consideration. Uh, flexibility throughout the sprint, so we had a plan initially, but the sprint backlog was changing throughout the sprint. And finally, we want to serve self-organized teams. But if they don't know what to do, if we just provide the whole, how are they going to self-organize? They're going to be ro just robots following a plan. So let's give purpose to our teams. And in terms of next steps, uh, I left that organization uh, after some time after we were implemented in this this part we were we were like at this level talking about sprint goals but our next step was to link those sprint goals to the release goals brings release goals which we didn't have and start having release goals and how the sprint goal would be linked to our release goal for those who are familiar with OKRs it's kind of the same idea how how we are aligned uh, with higher goals. For me, business agility is high alignment and uh, being very simplistic in this way. High alignment and high high autonomy. So if we know what to do and we have autonomy and it's got a skill to do it, we're going to perform way better. So uh, again, this is from Roman Pichler. Uh, you can explore this on his blog. He, he explains exactly uh, for every single step there are frameworks and a lot of material on it. Some final uh, words here. If you don't know where you're going to, 
you're going to end some uh, some some place else. Well, so if the teams are just running and our plans, they don't know what they are going to. They are going to. They are going to just be lost. So that's why why it's important to be specific in our goals because we have a target and we know what we want to do. Uh, this is a personal thing that I try to do is rather than managing people or forcing things to people and convince them by f forcing out something which doesn't work, I try to manage the environment. So I try to tweak the environment and see how they adapt to it. So if our retrospective is not working, I try to bring a new way of facilitation and a, a, a new element. If our dailies are not good, I try to identify something and work with them to to bring a new element where we can experiment and see how, how how it works, whether it works or not. But I always try to bring a new element, tweaking our system and see how the system reacts. And finally, that was mentioned as well. If we have purpose and we ensure that our teams have skills to achieve that purpose, just let them or leave space to them to have to perform the job. Uh, maybe grant autonomy. Grant autonomy is not that right worded, in my opinion. I, I brought this, the grant autonomy. Uh, it, autonomy is not something that you grant, really. It's not something oh, now you have autonomy. It's based on the actions that we have on a daily basis. So just leave room for people to perform the job, knowing what to do, having skills to perform that, like to build a paper airplane. Leave room to them, and you're going to be amazed by the results, the outcomes you get. And finally, we're going to build our, we're going to craft our sprint goal. It's going to sprint goal of one or two minutes. However, we're going to create a messenger, or you guys start creating a, a messenger, right? It's for the cause, 2018. And our goal is to validate whether a paper airplane can can fly an often to be a feedback to to uh, speakers, so that's gonna the the hypothesis that we're gonna validate, and you start building this. Uh, what are the methods that we're gonna use? We're gonna create a prototype. We're gonna work uh, on a prototype, and then we're gonna demo all together at the end. So hold it, don't do it like before. We're gonna do all the end at the end, okay? And uh, so that's gonna be nice in terms of exp experimentation. Each person is can be seen as a team, how many different uh, paper airplanes we're going to have. Think about that. And um, the methods we're going to use, well, I wasn't expecting like this size of the, the room. Perhaps I should increase the, the metrics in this way. But we still, we can validate at least four meters. Okay. And uh, the metric we can compare to is whether our paper airplane can fly at least four meters of distance. So uh, what I would ask you is, uh, we can use if you want if you use like if you want to use this uh, sheet of papers you can. If you want to use this one here also works because it's a feedback it's even written in here. So uh, build your paper airplane. If you can write down a feedback how I can improve this how can be more useful uh, whether you like it or not a smile face a sad face anything that can help me out to improve continuous improvement that would be very appreciated. We can do this in a minute or two, and then we all together gonna validate our product. So one minute and a half to build that, and then uh, we validate our product. Whenever we have done, just hold the hand, hands up, whatever we have this done, then I can see whether we are, we are, do, we are ready for our sprint review or not. Just a couple more seconds. Wait, 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 because I'm going to record that. Careful. No, no, that was all. <laughs> it's, it's just good. <laughs> so does everyone have it? Wait, wait, wait. I'm count. I'm gonna count up to three, and then you deliver it to your your stakeholder. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm your stakeholder. Are you ready? 
Okay, sorry. Look, look around, look around, look around. How many different paper airplanes we have? If we, if we had followed the, the instructions that we have in the, the group one, we would have all the same. So it's part of innovation as well. So think about that. We have so many, I can see here, so many different paper airplanes. And if we, we were having a, uh, just following a plan, like one person created how to do that, we, we would have just one single case. All right? Is everyone ready? Is? Yeah? So three, two, one. Sprint review, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. I don't know if we have time for questions. Thank you.